Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Field Trips. So I have made it up to Indiana. I'm currently in Bedford, Indiana, with my man here, Chad Brock. This guy's from Bass Crazy 365. He works with Jackson Kayak very closely, and he's brought me here to kind of a pretty unique fishery. We are in a quarry, a filled-in quarry. I've just been learning about all this this morning. And we're surrounded by a couple quarries, and we're here to do a little bass fishing. I thought it was really funny. I was talking to Chad on the phone, and he was like, well, you know what Indiana is known for, you know, corn, basketball, the Indy 500, and obviously limestone. And I kind of was, what? Limestone? What are you, I don't know what you're talking about. Turns out Indiana limestone is a thing. It's a special kind of limestone. So how fitting, we're here, gonna do a little bass fishing in a limestone quarry. He's talking about some decent, he called it the hog farm when we got here. So I'm feeling good about it. He's got the Jackson kayak, I've got the lightning. We're about to dump in. It's not at all what I expected. I thought it was gonna be just rocky, deep, clear water. It's not that at all. It's almost swampy. There's tons of laydowns and grass and all kinds of cover in here. So he's talking top water. I think we're gonna have some fun this morning. It was raining all morning and right as we got here, it kind of opened up, cleared up. It's still cloudy, but it's supposed to burn off and be a beautiful day. It's unseasonably cold, right? It's not normally. 59 degrees it was as we're pulling up here in June. Just, just crazy. I mean, I'm in a hoodie. I did not see that coming, but uh, Chad, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of this quarry system where we got going here. So what we've got is we've got two separate quarries. We've got a new quarry that's going in here. Up above us, we've got an old existing quarry that's been probably going since 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. Um, limestone obviously has been around our area since the early 1800s, um, since we've been shipping it out on trains and the Empire State Building all the way to the Pentagon and Derry Jeter's house in Florida. So I mean, <laughs> we've, we've shipped it everywhere and anywhere. Um, overseas. Um, this is actually an old quarry that's since passed away from probably the early 1800s. But um, as you can see, you've got two separate companies digging right around the old existing quarry. So we're gonna get out here today, try to get Robert on some fish, and I don't know, we'll see what happens. We're definitely gonna have fun. That I have no doubt. Yep, absolutely. So let's go fishing. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Back there might be kind of if you drift through here, there's a little bit of a hump. Um, see, the kind of there's an open area, and then there's just like two, there's four stumps just kind of like right there in a row. Yeah, that's kind of a shelf. Okay. He was hit it. I thought I heard it. He did, he come he up and got it. Water, huh? All right, well he's throwing a frog first thing. Just got bit, first cast. Something slurped it right when it hit the bottom. I'm starting off with this little weightless, weedless paddle tail. That basically I'm just gonna swim right along the surface. Well, we thought we timed it perfect with the rain. Apparently perfect was a little too strong a word. Got another little shower. First blood for Chad Brock here, nice. They hit that zoom? Yep, hit the zoom, man. Top water. Right as that rain quit, you said they're about to start feeding again. There it is. Yep. Sharp teeth, never been caught. <laughs> Annihilated it, dude. That was so fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got one. Just, just annihilated it, dude, right next to the boat. Nothing is better than when you hear your guest giggling. That makes it all worth it. That's what it's about. Taking somebody fishing, putting them on fish, and listening to them laugh. That is everything. There we go. Mark came in the angler app and, man, just, that's about as fun as it gets in bass fishing, if you ask me. Uh, just annihilated this swim bait right on the top of the water. Oh, look, he's got another one, too. Oh, hi, baby. We own them now. Been out here for all of eight minutes. And the rain's back, but it was fun right there. <laughs> See you, buddy. Thanks for that. I got a feeling we're about to have some fun, y'all. 
Cannot beat top water, especially moving top waters. Like it's fun to have a frog sitting there and, or a popper and watch it get annihilated, but when that thing's moving and just at any second, it might get smoked. And there it was. watched him shoot over that log and like the anticipation knowing that here at any second I was gonna feel this thing oh my gosh oh <laughs> yeah if you can't this this is fun bro I don't know if you can you can tell he really screwed up my my bait here but I might just run this upside down I don't think it matters so this is a presentation that I think a lot of people don't think of when they think of topwater fishing but basically just a weedless paddle tail with no weight and what's cool about it is that you can speed it up and it'll sit on the top of the water and that tail will just kind of thump, make a nice little wake, nice little churning sound. But then you can slow it down and let it kind of go a little bit subsurface and you really got two presentations in one. And uh, so far I've kind of hit them, they've kind of hit it both ways, but oh my gosh, that was fun. This is, this is, this is some fun fishing right here. I would not be mad if they kept chasing these topwaters like this all day. hear a bullfrog back there which is always a good sign when you're topwater fishing knowing that there's topwater forage in the area and I mean I'm not really picking my cast right now there's just it all looks good there's structure and cover everywhere so I'm really just uh, just fan casting this thing everywhere I can there we go bro dude <laughs> Bro, so we're giggling like a schoolgirl, man. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Relax, old girl. I'll let you go. Oh, and she spit it. <laughs> you guys, this is gonna be a fun day of fishing. It's already a fun day of fishing. No monsters, but hey. When they're hitting like that, it don't even matter. Welcome to the hog farm. <laughs> That's so much fun, man. Dude, the hog farm. These hogs are hungry. Let's see him. He exploded on it too. Man. You can't beat this, dude. Black back. Yeah, I love that. These dark colors on them. Dude! No! 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 Bro, the second it hit the water. Oh, I bet he came off. I couldn't get him over that log. Dude, that was so sick. I was in the process of an Instagram story. That was so sick. I'm sure she came off. I couldn't flip her up over the stick. The second it hit the water, man. Oh, just giant boil. I thought I spooked it because I just saw this giant swirl the second it landed and then nope. bloop, took it under. God, I hate that I just blew this up. It's shallow here, man. It's like a foot deep, bro. Yeah. Or at least the vegetation on the bottom, there's only a foot of water. <laughs> I just can't stop giggling, man. This is fun here. When I was thinking about what I was gonna be doing in Indiana, catching bass in top water in a foot of water was not what I was expecting. I got an extra power fall if you just <gasps> football it. Dude! He just waked to right there and there he goes the other way. I just ran out of room. He was following him. Hit it this time. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. That fish followed. I saw the weight coming to right there and I just ran out of room. I had nowhere to go. This is wild, bro. They are just voracious in, in here. Look at this. <laughs> no. 
GoPro still got that too. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I got all three cameras. I got all three cameras running right now just because it's so non-stop. It's like, I never do that. That was at least a three, wasn't it? It was, it, yeah, probably like two and a half. They're just so, they hit it so hard. I keep thinking they're going to be giants. And then, that I think that was the same fish that waked, man. Because I watched the wake go back, and then that's where he hit it. Dude. Do you hear me? I was like, he's about to hit it. He's about to hit it. He's about to hit it. And then, bam, he hit it. Like, calling the shots. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't hate this. No, I, I knew if it would be on, it would be so much fun. Yep. Oh, skin him, skin him. Look at that. Well, this gives you an idea of the uh, kinds of cover down there. It felt so heavy, I was like, oh, that's a good one, but it was just two thirds grass. They're so mad at it. <laughs> He's, they're, they're so mad at it, man. That looks like a better one. Yeah. Man, we own them. That big rock pile in the background, that's cool. No, get out of there. Get out of there. No, no. Dude, are you kidding me? He wrapped me around this thing. I can't even get it off. God, these fish are crafty. They're using this wood like, like they know what they're doing. Outsmart me on all this wood. There's just a lot of stuff in this water. Topwater bass in a quarry swamp. Not what I had envisioned for my time in Indiana, and I am not mad about it. That sun might might kill this topwater bite, I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, I gotta get him over this log again. There we go. <laughs> Just pole vaulted him over that log. <laughs> Golly. A little bit of grass, y'all. Well, I literally just said this top water bite might die with the sun coming out. Apparently it's not dying. Man, they're all pretty skinny. Like big heads and skinny bodies. I think probably because there's so many in here. Just competing for food, you know? So one of the things to think about when you're throwing a top water that sinks, you really kind of need to keep your rod tip high over the water to keep that thing up and keep it from sinking, right? Especially when you got all this grass on top. So you can sit down and you keep your rod tip high. The problem with that is then when you go to set the hook, you really gotta reel down before you set the hook. Otherwise you're starting high and you, you, you don't have enough swing. You don't have enough swing. But by standing up, I can basically keep the rod tip still high relative to the water, but lower relative to my body, which gives me better, a better swing on the hook set. So whenever you got a top water that, that sinks that you need to keep up on the top, Really standing up is the way to go. And I think probably a few of those fish that came off, I might've caught had I been standing up when they bit. Yeah, or maybe not. <laughs> not gonna have like that's a guarantee, but it would've helped, would've helped. God, this thing couldn't get any more weedless. I'm still picking this stuff up like every cast. It's even wrapping around the, the tail, the paddle tail. Now he's on the wood again. Get out of there. Get out of there. Yeah. Well, I got the better hooks that I was talking about, and there's so much grass on this guy. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. You guys, have I mentioned how fun this is? <laughs> like, oh, it's just textbook. Now, it's there, there's grass everywhere, so I don't want to say that they're not holding to the grass because there's grass everywhere. So they are holding the grass, but certainly I think every one of my bites now has come off the wood. So they're definitely holding to that. You can tell there's a lot of them in here about that size, but man, what a fun morning. Ding him in the angler app and some on his way. <laughs> he was ready. He had enough of me. All right, I'm gonna rig this guy upside down. It's tearing through this plastic, these ferocious strikes but I don't think it matters upside down when you're running on top of the water. 
Might even give a little kind of funky action. It is about to be a beautiful day. And again, we're here in June, yet the high today is 75, 76. It's gonna be delightful. I am worried though that now that that sun's out, that this top water bite may slow down. We'll see. Dude, better one, better one, and I'm, he, he's got me around so much stuff, dude. I had one on look at him, look at him. He's out in the damn water, stuck on this tree. Hang on, buddy. Don't leave me. What are you on? I don't even understand. Oh, <gasps> he broke me off. I had that fool dangling from a tree, bro. He had to have been like, what in the? Just spooked a big, decent bass out of this grass. They're up in this stuff. Six. Yeah. Like I saw him pop out and then just saw him disappear into it. Might have to switch tactics here. <laughs> oh, there's still a few willing to play. Come here, stay on top. Skim, skim. <laughs> Look at that, up in the shadows, like I was saying. Well, just a little one, but they'll still hit the swim bait on top. There you go, buddy. Go hide in the grass. There's so much grass between me and him. I, when you're fishing thick stuff like this, you really gotta burn these fish in. Ski them across the top of the water, they call it. Or they're just gonna end up fouling you up in it. But like I was saying, they're not really feeling this top water out in the sun, but we still got shade over here. And here, it's basically a different pattern, or really it's still the same pattern over here. Whereas outside of the shade of these trees, the pattern has changed. We're gonna talk about that more in a minute, but first, while I still got some shade over here, let's see if I can't do that again. Oh, something big just waked right there. All right, guys, let's take a second to talk about bass behavior and adapting while bass fishing which is just critical to success so i mean this morning was just insane hot and heavy crazy action they were couldn't keep it out of their mouths now that sun came out and it's like a switch got flipped now they're not eating so i think what we need to do is go with something a little more subtle now when the sun comes out when there's sunshine when visibility's high bass stick to cover tighter so they got to ambush prey so they're not gonna be out in the open when the prey can see easily. So I'm taking off that paddle tail and I'm gonna go with a little weightless fluke. Something that'll still imitate bait fish, but something that A, it's a little more subtle and a little slower, and B, something I can fish around all this kind of slop grass that's everywhere because probably most of these fish, they're either gonna be in kind of the one deep hole in this quarry or they're gonna be up in this slop grass and that paddle tail it just moves by them so quick that even if they see it and want to eat it, I think they lose it and can't find it once they turn to, to try to go grab it. So it's pretty interesting that that sun, look at that dude. Something sizable just, it's pretty <laughs> Well, there's one for the blooper reel. Well, I didn't say he'd catch big bass, but that was very first cast with the fluke. We just saw something smack some bait. And uh, smallest fish of the day, but first cast with the fluke. I'm not gonna say I told y'all so, but I told y'all so. When that sun comes out, these bass get spookier. They want something more subtle. And this thing just flicking out of the surface. Uh, God, it just, it looked good, dude. Were you, did you, were you watching that? Yeah, it, right. just, it just looked right it looked it, i mean a lot like i've been seeing bait fish about the size of this fluke maybe a hair smaller gray hounding out of the water as stuff spooks them so basically matching that and there it was one cast one fish of course i had no cameras going because i was really just kind of making a little test flick but hey theory proven 
Now let's see if we can't get a bigger girl to commit to it. Oh, wow, right there. Yep. The fluke, baby. The fluke. Get out of there. Get out of there, too. <laughs> Little swamp thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll try to tell y'all. Adaptability. Key to bass fishing here. So, guys, when the sun comes out and the bite gets tough, go a little more subtle and they'll keep playing. I love it when I talk theory and it actually pans out. That's that's the that's exception. A decent one too. Yeah, it is. Super clear spot right there. What a sick little spot, man. Thanks, old girl, for proving I'm not a complete idiot when it comes to bass fishing. Appreciate that. Very gentlemanly of you. And there she goes. Nice, bro. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, guys. Well, sun came up. The bite pretty much died i mean we could keep grinding it out try to catch a few more but when you had a morning like that there's no need to keep beating your head against the same wall what a killer spot dude yeah. what a unique little fishery and uh once we got the drone in the air i mean it's so cool to just kind of see what all's going on around here i cannot believe how much limestone is stacked up over there in just gigantic blocks but man that was one of the more fun just little blitz bites i've had in a while Chad Brock, you guys, check him out. Bass Crazy 365 and Jackson Kayak. Put links down in the description to his Instagram, all that stuff. Such a blast, man. Dude, it was an honor having you. Thanks uh, for coming to Indiana. Two days before I came to Indiana, I had no idea what I was doing in Indiana. And my buddy Justin Hausner, who I stayed with in upstate New York a couple years back, told me he had the guy. He put me in touch with Chad, and what a treat. What a treat. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel if you dig the content. And yeah, from here I'll be heading north to Ohio. Lake Erie Big Smallmouth is uh, on the menu. See, ya. See what we get into. That was sick, dude. Good job, man. What a fun day. What a day. What a fun day. What a fun, like, three hour morning oh, wow. quick sesh. Yeah. Dude says he's coming. Oh, I got a spot. <laughs> I got I the honey hole. I can't imagine, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. may or may not have just flown the drone into a tree. I knew this day just went too smoothly. Like I'd never come out here and have basically a whole episode done at, at 10 o'clock in the morning. It all just seemed to be going too well and there it is, the old drone in the tree. So time for a little rescue mission. Just hoping it's not in a really high tree. Kayak rescue mission commence. Wait, drone rescue. drone rescue mission. Wait, rescue no kayak. Don't say that. Don't say that when you're in my boat. Give James a heart attack. Problem is, I just don't know exactly which tree I'm looking for. Why don't they make these things bright orange? I feel like I'm never gonna find it. Well, a pretty klutz move with a $1,200 drone. Yeah, it should be near the outside, but... I found it. So luckily this thing's still like, the motor's still going. So I heard it. It's up in here and all this thick stuff. Now the question is how I'm gonna get it down. Got him. Surprisingly, it doesn't really seem any worse for the wear. It kind of hit all these, it was stuck in these vines, which were thorny and they got, I cut my hands up, but 
uh, I think it kind of softened its fall. So a few scrapes and scuffs, but honestly, not even none of the. Oh wait, yeah, no, none of the props even look messed up. Dodged a bullet on that one. Rookie mistake. <laughs> Had to be one hiccup today. You, know, you can't film an episode without anything going wrong. Although a $1,200 drone into the trees going 40 miles an hour. Probably wouldn't have been my top choice for mishaps, but hey, crisis averted. Klutz. It looks fine. I'm glad it was still alive. I never would have found it, but I heard the motor was still going. It was still on. Really? Yeah, there's no way I would have seen it. It was in all kinds of vines with thorns on them, just like deep up in there, but luckily I heard it and then I saw the red light and I was like, oh, we're good. <sighs> Dude, I mean, not even a blade, not even a prop That's broken. Amazing, man. Yeah, hardy little thing. This is accidentally becoming a little DJI testimonial video. <sighs> well, never a dull moment.